everybody. My name is Professor Sabrina Isaac Barry from Barry Times Lab, and oh, I've got a call. Is it about the train problems? Mmm, the moon. Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, yes. That big ball of cheese up in the sky? Wait, that's the moon? Oh, oh. So, uh, the moon is an ancient ball of rock. It's debated if it's rock or cheese, but it's most likely rock. And so, this rocky giant uh, has existed for 4.5 billion years. And maybe there's those green little alien men who have stepped on the moon before. However, we have thought of it as a heavenly body. Just a few thousand years ago, we thought of it as a heavenly body that couldn't even be touched. We have stepped on the moon nonetheless. And the moon is extremely... The moon has an extremely complicated history. Now, we will be talking about moon travel in this series. But, to begin again with traveling to the moon, we first have to look, take a peek at how the moon was formed. Alright, so the moon was formed a long, long time ago. However, there are three leading theories. Only two of them really actually have any evidence. Alright, so the first and the very, well, huge theory that mostly prevails throughout, science, uh, throughout scientists' minds, this theory is the collision theory, I think. The Great Collision. So basically, in the early stages of the solar system, when it was only a few million years old, there was a bunch of stuff just flying everywhere, with the sun at the center watching it. It's kind of like a kindergarten class with the sun being the teacher. God, that's chaotic. But anyway, all of these planets and exoplanets and planetesimals were friggin' everywhere, dude. And so, this this jumble of planets and stars, etc., 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 there were bound to be some collisions. So, one day, there was this little ball that was about the size of Mars, named Theia. And Theia was bumping into Earth. And so, some of you might expect it to be when you awkwardly bump uh, into someone on the street. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, bye, thank you. However, it wasn't that. When Earth tried to say, uh, sorry, bye, bye, thank you, the uh, Thea just kept going in, dude. And Thea made a huge impact, which would let debris fly literally everywhere. And so, all this debris flew into nearly the same... Uh, all this debris, some of them were, um, flew into uh, the very close, very close place. And so, this debris, by logic of gravity, just coalesce together and form what would be the early moon. Now, the thing is, there is a lot of evidence to support this. For one, first of all, the Earth and the moon have shockingly similar compositions. There are slight discrepancies, but that can be explained by parts of Dia and parts of Earth mixing together into the moon. And, if you might be thinking Theas might be different, they were formed in the same neighborhood, the solar system. So, why would they be different? So, when Earth crashed into Theia, all of this just flew out and created the moon. Now, why was it named Theia, you ask? Well, it was named after a Greek goddess named Theia, who was the mother of another Greek goddess who was the goddess of the moon. And hence, Theia creating the moon. But this was not a matter of pregnancy. This was a matter of huge celestial bodies colliding. But anyways, this is the leading theory for how the moon was formed. What is the second theory for how the moon is formed? Well, the second theory is that there, there it was no Earth or moon. Uh, there was no Earth without a moon. The second theory says that the two huge the bodies, five times the size of Mars, crashed into each other, uh, shockingly similar to how Earth crashed into Thea in the other theory. And when these uh, and the leftover debris 
that a lot of the debris became Earth and just a tiny little bit became the Moon. It does explain the similarity between the Earth and the Moon's composition, but not the small differences. And it also doesn't explain a lot of other things. So, this has mostly been disqualified from the actual scientific community. And the third example is that Earth is a selfish planet. Earth just <coughs> took it from a much smaller, but uh, presumably much smaller planetesimal that it had significantly less mass, so it just had significantly less pull. And so Earth became selfish and say, uh, said, hey, I want that moon, give it to me now. And so the Earth stole the moon and be. However, usually stolen moons aren't in the perfect shape of a sphere or an oblate spheroid. Usually, they're kind of like kind of really misshapen asteroids, kind of like Phobos and Deimos on Mars. And there is absolutely no evidence to support this one. And uh, other than the fact that it kind of explains how Earth and the Moon have the same composition because they were formed in the same system, but not really. But the thing is, there are all of these theories coming out there, but there is one prevailing theory, the huge big ball collision theory, or also called as like the great collision theory, I don't remember the name. But anyway, Thank you everybody for watching and next time we will cover the early perspectives on the moon and the first people who had the idea of traveling to a body in space.